Welcome to National 4, National 5 Chemistry. Um, we are still on Unit 1, looking at acids and alkalis, and we're going to finish this set of lessons off with um, a two-part lesson. First part is going to look at what we call insoluble products, and the second part is going to look at something we call spectator ions. So our learning objective is to understand that some products of neutralisation are insoluble. We want to be able to use the data booklet to determine the solubility of compounds so that we know whether a product is soluble or not. We want to understand that acids and alkalis produce ions in solution whenever they are doing reactions and to be able to identify of these ions that are reacting which ones are spectator ions and by spectator ions we mean ions that do not change state during a reaction. So just to start off as with a review of the reactions of acids that we know. So we know three neutralization reactions, metal oxide plus acid produces a metal salt plus water, metal hydroxide plus acid gives a metal salt plus water, metal carbonate plus acid gives a metal salt plus water plus carbon dioxide, and finally, we know that the reaction of metal and acid gives a metal salt plus hydrogen. And in a previous lesson, we learned how to name the salts from these reactions. Um, but reviewing that, remember that hydrochloric acid forms metal chlorides, nitric acid forms metal nitrates, sulfuric acid forms metal sulfates, and phosphoric acid forms metal phosphates. Now precipitation reactions. A reaction um, is described as a precipitation reaction if a solid is produced from reactions or reactants, sorry, that are solutions or liquids. So if we mix two solutions together and it goes cloudy or we get an obvious solid being produced, that is a precipitation reaction and we call the solid that forms a precipitate. The data booklet, page eight, is where you look to see if a particular product from a reaction is soluble or not. So to do this, you will need access to a data booklet. And um, if you want to take the time to pause the video and find a data booklet and turn to page eight. These questions will see whether or not you can understand and use the data booklet. So the first question is, is calcium oxide soluble? Well, if we look at page eight of the data booklet, we look on the left hand side and we go to calcium. And then we go across until we see the column uh, labeled oxide. We can see that there is an S in that box. That S means it is soluble. Then if we look at calcium phosphate, well, we start at calcium and work our way across to where it says phosphate and there is an I, that means it is insoluble. So if the reactants are soluble, but the products are insoluble, we call that a precipitation reaction and the product we call a precipitate. So this is um, an exercise that you can try and um, using the data booklet um, itself. So using the data booklet. If you don't have access to the data booklet, then just skip on in the video. But if you do have access to the data booklet, I suggest that you pause video and look up each of these. If you have unpaused the video after having a go, here are your answers. So calcium oxide is soluble, calcium nitrate is soluble, zinc is not soluble, that one's not on the table, but zinc is a metal and doesn't dissolve. Zinc sulfate is soluble. Iron carbonate is, iron two carbonate is insoluble, iron two chloride is soluble, sodium hydroxide is soluble, sodium nitrate is soluble, copper two oxide is not soluble, and copper two phosphate is also insoluble. Now you don't always have to resort to looking at the data booklet to know whether or not the product of a reaction is soluble or not. 
Many chemical reactions will include things called state symbols that will tell you the physical state of the chemical. So for example, I've got a reaction here. We've got copper carbonate plus sulfuric acid produced uh, going to copper sulfate plus water plus carbon dioxide. So this is the reaction of a metal carbonate with an acid. Now you can see beside each chemical, there is a symbol, either one or two letters inside brackets that come after the chemical. Those symbols tell you the physical state. So if you've got an S after a chemical, that means it is a solid. If you've got a G after a chemical, that is a gas. If you've got L after it, it's a liquid. And if you've got AQ, that stands for aqueous, and that means that it is dissolved. So if we look at the equation um, on this slide, copper carbonate is a solid. Sulfuric acid is aqueous, so it's a solution. Copper sulfate is aqueous, so it's a solution. Water is a liquid, and carbon dioxide is a gas. So you can tell if the starting reactants are liquid or aqueous, and any of the products are solid, you can identify that as a precipitation reaction. So if a product is insoluble and the reactants are either liquids or dissolved, we call that a precipitation reaction. So for example, this top one, we can see that we have got something that's aqueous reacting with something that's aqueous, and it's going to a solid plus a liquid. So that top one, um, our reactants are soluble, one of our products is insoluble, and that makes that a precipitation reaction. Then if we look at the bottom reaction, well, our reactants, they're both soluble. We know this because they're both aqueous. And then if we look at our products, well, our product is soluble and water is a liquid, so we don't need to worry about it. So if our products are soluble and our reactants are soluble, then that is not a precipitation reaction. So related to precipitation reaction, are things called spectator ions. And we only get spectator ions if a reaction is not a precipitation reaction. And whenever we're talking about spectator ions, the first thing we need to be able to do is to identify the ions that are inside compounds or that form when compounds dissolve. So for example, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid has a formula HCl. When it dissolves, we get a positive ion, H plus, and a negative ion, Cl minus. Nitric acid has a formula, HNO3. When it dissolves, we get a positive ion, H plus, and a negative ion, NO3 minus. Sulfuric acid has a formula, H2SO4. When it dissolves, we get two positive ions, which are both H plus, and we get a negative ion, SO4, 2 minus, the sulfate ion. In alkalis, when they dissolve, um, usually it's only hydroxides that dissolve, but when sodium hydroxide dissolves, we get the sodium ion, Na+, and we get a negative ion hydroxide, OH-. When potassium hydroxide dissolves, we get a positive K plus ion, and we get a negative OH- hydroxide ion. When we look at salts, we need to break up the salt into two parts. So sodium chloride, we get the sodium ion Na plus and the chloride ion Cl minus. And for potassium nitrate, we get the K plus ion, potassium ion, and we get the NO3 nitrate ion. With sodium sulfate, we get the sodium ion, but we get two of them because it was Na2 in the formula, and we get the SO4 2 minus ion. Now remember, if a salt is insoluble, it does not form ions. So you need to look at the state symbol, and only if the state symbol is aqueous can you break a salt into ions. 
So ions in solution. When acids alkalize and salts dissolve, they form ions. So hydrochloric acid. When hydrochloric acid dissolves, you get the H plus ion and the Cl minus ion. When sodium hydroxide dissolves, you get the sodium plus ion and the hydroxide minus ion. When sodium chloride dissolves, uh, you get the sodium plus ion and the chloride minus ion. In neutralization reactions, when we looked at this, I think in the third lesson, we know that neutralization, when that happens, the H plus ion reacts with the OH minus hydroxide ion to produce water. And so the ions are no longer ions, they formed a new compound. Now, spectator ions are any ions that do not form a reaction during, uh, do not react during a chemical reaction. They are called spectator ions because essentially they just watch the reaction happening. Spectator ions are always aqueous. So here we have an example. So we've got a reaction, sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid gives us sodium chloride plus water. So we then write out this chemical uh, reaction as a chemical equation using our chemical formula. So NaOH aqueous plus HCl aqueous goes to sodium chloride NaCl aqueous plus water H2O liquid. Then what we need to do is break every compound that is aqueous into ions. So remember, we're only doing this for compounds that are aqueous. So Na plus OH minus is what we do for sodium hydroxide. For hydrochloric acid, we turn that into H plus and Cl minus. And for sodium chloride, we turn that into Na plus and Cl minus. Water is not aqueous, so we don't do anything to it. Now, spectator ions are ions that do not change. So ions that are the same on both sides of the arrow. So we've got an Na plus ion here, and we've got an Na plus ion here. We've got a Cl minus ion here, and a Cl minus ion here. The Na plus and the Cl minus ions are found on both sides of the equation. That means they have not done anything. If they have not done anything, they are spectator ions. So you're often asked to rewrite equations removing the spectator ions. So we know for this reaction, we can remove the Na plus ions and the Cl minus ions. So for the above, we're removing them from both sides. Remember, you need to remove them from both sides. And when we take them out, we get left with OH minus aqueous plus H plus aqueous, giving us H2O liquid. Now remember, only aqueous compounds form ions in reactions. If a precipitate forms, that means that there are no spectator ions. So we've got a few examples here. Uh, we've got three reactions. We want you to firstly determine if there are any spectator ions and if there are spectator ions to write down what those ions are. So for this you probably are going to need to pause the video, give yourself um, about five minutes to have a go at those three questions and then restart the video. So I'm hoping that you've come back after having had a go and written down your answers and we'll go through each question one at a time. So for the first one, we've got potassium hydroxide KOH plus nitric acid HNO3 producing potassium nitrate KNO3 and water. So for this one, we have aqueous before and after the arrow. We've not produced a solid. So this is not a precipitation reaction. And because it's not a precipitation reaction, that means we will definitely have spectator ions. And the spectator ions we have are the K plus ion, which is found in potassium hydroxide, KOH on the left-hand side, and in KNO3 on the right-hand side. 
and the other spectator ion is NO3 minus. That NO3 minus is found on the left hand side as part of nitric acid, HNO3, and also in potassium nitrate as NO3. For the next reaction, silver hydroxide aqueous plus hydrochloric acid aqueous goes to silver chloride solid plus H2O liquid. Now with this one, we have produced a solid on the right hand side. That is a precipitation reaction. And if it's a precipitation reaction, there are no spectator ions. For the next one, we've got lithium carbonate, Li2CO3, plus H2SO4, aqueous, so that's sulfuric acid. We're producing lithium sulfate, Li2SO4, plus water, plus carbon dioxide. Um, on the left hand side, we have aqueous and aqueous, and on the right hand side, we have aqueous too. So we do not have any solid forming, so this is not a precipitation reaction, which means that we do have spectator ions. The spectator ions are lithium plus, which is found on the left hand side as part of lithium carbonate, and on the right hand side as part of lithium sulfate. The other spectator ion is the sulfate ion, SO4-2-, which is found on the left-hand side as part of H2SO4 and on the right-hand side as part of Li2SO4. So that concludes our look at precipitation reactions and spectator ions. And that finishes our set of lessons on acids and alkalis. So thank you for paying attention through all these lessons.